Hello students and welcome to video two in chapter 3.8 investment appraisal. So in the last video, we did the first two uh, investment appraisal techniques, which were payback and average rate of return or ARR. In this video, we're going to do net present value, which we're going to call NPV. Just to be just to be clear, this is an HL only video. So SL students, you do not need to know this. So um, in the last video, we looked at the pros and cons of payback versus ARR. And we saw that a couple of cons for payback were um, payback ignores later cash flows. In the calculation, we work out when do we get our money back? When do we get to zero? But it doesn't include any cash flows afterwards, which could encourage short-term thinking because it ignores what happens later on in the project. With ARR, it ignores the timing of the cash flows. So it could be that you have, uh, at the beginning of the project, you have small cash flows, but at the end of the project, that's when you get your larger cash flows, which again is a bit of an issue as we're gonna see today. So with net present value, this attempts to solve both of those problems. This one kind of brings together the two of them together, if you like. Um, and it's built on the idea that, uh, let's say $100 is worth more today than in the future. So if I were to give you an option, I can give you 100 euros now, or I can give you 100 euros in six years. Which one would you take? Well, you know, have a think about it. But um, the pros of taking the now are, well, you've got 100 euros in your hand, which is obviously never a bad thing. But the other benefit is, is that in six years, 100 euros will be able to buy less. And that's because of this word inflation. So inflation is the idea that prices go up over time. And hence, the value of money goes down over time. So I'm sure um, people of my generation, we talk about how we could buy chocolate bars when we were young for very cheap. And I seem to remember I could buy chocolate bars for 20p in England or something like that. And now they're obviously a lot more expensive. And that's because of inflation. And then the further into the future, the more inflation will erode the value of money. And so what um, investment appraisal tries to do is it attempts to use something called discounting. And discounting is when we reduce the values of cash flows using a discount factor. And the more into the future, the more it's discounted. Now, we're going to do some examples, but that's the idea is that we're going to reduce future cash flows by this inflation number so that we can compare the project better. So what you're going to get is something like this. So I've got the same numbers from the previous uh, video. So we've got four years in this project. The investment is 500 and then we get 200 per year. And then we might get a question, something like calculate the MPV. MPV is net present value at 4% discount rate. Now, what you will be given or should be given is a table like the one below. So you've got years zero up to six. Don't worry about the number of years. This just means that if you do have a project with more than four years, then you've got the discount factors. And then it's going to give you these numbers at 4%, 6%, 8%, maybe 2%, maybe 10%, et cetera. Um, and all you need to do is uh, look at the discount rate in the question. So here it's 4%. And then go to the relevant column um, in this discount rate table. And then what you do is... Uh, you want to create this table here. So I told you to create the accumulated cash flow. Um, so now what you're going to do is you're going to create discount factor and discounted cash flow. So you want to create these two in your table. And then the first thing we do is we take the same thing and we just add the numbers from the 4% column. So you can see it says 0, 01, 1 is 0 0.9615, etc. So just copy those numbers in. <clears throat> and then the next thing we do is we do this. So in order to um, calculate these numbers on the right, what we do is we multiply the cash flow by the discount factor. So here we do 500 or minus 500 times one gives us minus 500. 200 times 0 0.9615 gives us 192.3. 200 times 0.9246 gives us et cetera, et cetera. So all we do is we just multiply this by this to get the discounted cash flow over here. And then the NPV, net present value, is calculated as a sum of the discounted cash flows. So what we do is we just add all numbers together in this column here. So we get minus 500 plus 192.3, et cetera, et cetera. And then that will give us this number, NPV equals 222.98. 
Now, what does this what does this number represent? That's that's important thing here. Well, beforehand we added all these together, so we get minus five hundred plus two hundred, two hundred, two hundred, two hundred, which gave us three hundred. So, if you ignore inflation, the profit from the project will be you know the sum of all the cash flows would be three hundred. This two two five does exactly the same thing. We're just adding all together together all the cash flows, but what we're doing is. Um, we're discounting all these cash flows according to this 4% inflation. And so you can see that even though in year one and year four, it's both 200, you can see now that year one is 192 and year four is 170. And that's because we're discounting this one by a higher amount. And all that's saying is that this 200 in year one is more valuable because we're getting the money quicker and therefore... Um, inflation has less of an effect, and you can see that 192 is therefore bigger than 170. Um, if we had the question calculate the NPV at 6%, we just do the same thing. So we take the, the table here, um, we go into the 6% column, um, and we would then copy and paste these numbers or just write them in. So 1.9434, etc., etc. And again, we just um, multiply these together. So 500 times 1, 200 times this to get the discounted cash flows. And then to get the MPV, we just add together those five rows there, the discounted cash flow, which gives us 193. Uh, over to you. If you want to pause the video, you don't have to. You can just run through. But um, this one would be at 8%. Um, if you want to have a go at that, just pause the video now. If not, or if you've done it, then you should have got 162.4. So what I've done here is I've put together the discount rate alongside the NPV, and we you should hopefully be able to see something here, which is the higher the discount rate, the lower the NPV. Um, and the reason for that is that future cash flows are discounted more heavily at the higher rates. So if it's 8%, then inflation is going to have more of an impact, so therefore the value of money is lower in the future compared to 4%. And therefore, when an economy has high interest rates, the NPV of projects will go down. And again, that's because of cash flows being discounted more heavily in the future. And therefore, they're less likely that they will get approved. Obviously, this NPV tells people how profitable is this project, you know, accounting for inflation, how much money should we make? And so therefore, the higher the interest rates, the less likely that they will get improved. And that's one reason why generally, when interest rates go in an economy, when interest rates go up, it can slow the economy down. And often the, the government will do this to fight inflation. And so interest rates are very important for assessing whether projects actually get done. So um, in conclusion, MPV takes account of the time value of money. But the problem is assumptions have to be made about a discount rate to use. We've used 4%, 6%, 8%. Um, and we can we can you know come up with a system of choosing these, but we just never know what the future is going to happen, and so our interest rates going to go up or down. We don't know what future inflation is, so that's one of the issues here. Right, so that's mostly done. There's a couple of extra things I wanted to show you. Firstly, you do not need to know this, but I just wanted to show you where these numbers actually do come from because I think for some of you it'd be interesting. Um, and so if we're discounting at six percent. To get the year one discount factor, what we do is we do one divided by 1.06, um, and that will give us 0.9434. And that's why we don't get 0.9400. Um, it's because we're dividing by one plus discount factor. And then year two, we do one divided by 1.06 squared, um, and then et cetera. So we do 1.06 cubed. And so for the nth year, we do one divided by 1.06 to the power of n. If you don't understand that, or you don't need to know that, so don't worry. Um, so just a final thought, um, we look at payback, ARR and MPV, all of these have pros and cons. So we've looked at each of the calculations, we looked at why they're good and what, what the limitations are. So they all have pros and cons. And so one of the key things is you want to use a combination of them together. So the idea is you might calculate all three of them and then compare projects based on all three of them together. Um, and therefore you get a better rounded picture of which project is best. One other issue is they all ignore qualitative factors. So these are just numbers based. All of these calculations are, because they're calculations, they're all just numbers based. So they ignore qualitative factors. And qualitative factors are factors which are non-numerical or don't involve numbers. And so, for example, if we were looking at whether to build a new factory or not, yes, we could do payback, ARR and MPV. 
But what about other things? So, for example, will our employees want to relocate? So if we build a new factory, some of our employees may have to relocate. Maybe that's not very far, but maybe it's to another city. And so we'd need to consider, and if they don't want to relocate, then we need to go and hire people. And maybe in a new place, can we hire enough workers? So that's something that needs to be considered. <clears throat> what legal issues are there? And so that's another thing to consider. Um, if we look at it from a um, university point of view, we, we could do an ARR payback and MPV of university. But there are lots of other qualitative factors. So, for example, at university, we meet lots of new people, we make new friends, and also things like going to sports and clubs and things like that, which we might not have the opportunity in other situations. So it's not always just money-based. Obviously, money and numbers are important, but we need to put into the context of other things as well. Right, we're now done with 3.8. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.